Hi there, it's Ross from SDS. Welcome back to the channel and video number 86. This video will cover ignition timing on the CPI, CPI2, and EM5. Hopefully you'll find it uh, interesting and informative. So SDS timing is pretty easy to understand. RPM timing, plus or minus manifold pressure advance or retard equals total timing. Okay, so this is an example timing chart. This one's for CPI2, but they're also very similar for CPI and EM5. So in this column, we've got uh, RPM. That's pretty uh, self-explanatory. And uh, beside each RPM slot here, we've got uh, the ignition timing. So at 500, we've got 10 degrees, 750, 15, and so on. Um, generally in the operational range on the Lycoming, We'd set uh, about 25 degrees for parallel valve engines and uh, perhaps uh, 20 to 22 for angle valve engines. And over in this column here, column D, we've got uh, manifold pressure. And uh, column E here is uh, ignition advance retard with manifold pressure. So the ignition timing on SDS is a composite of the RPM ignition timing plus uh, advance or minus retard. So if we have an example here, we'll say uh, 2400 RPM, we've got 25 degrees, and we'll say at uh, sea level, we're able to pull uh, 28.9 inches at wide open throttle. We've got two degrees of retard here. So the total ignition timing would be 25 minus two. That would give us 23 degrees total, which you'd be able to see in the gauge modes. And if we're at high altitude, uh, again, wide open, 2,400 RPM, but we're only able to pull, we'll say, 18.6 uh, inches wide open, the computer would be uh, adding 3 degrees of advance. So it would be uh, 25 degrees RPM timing plus 3 degrees of advance, and that will give us 28 degrees total. So to explain a little bit more about this, the RPM can be uh, anything within the operational range, and manifold pressure is basically controlled by the throttle angle and the uh, atmospheric pressure outside. So at uh, very low manifold pressures, we don't modify the ignition timing. You just get uh, the base timing here with RPM. So below the idle range and so forth, there's zero retard or advance. It's not being modified at all, so you'd get, uh, if you're at 1700 RPM, and uh, below uh, 13 inches or so, you would just get uh, 25 degrees here. So we uh, add advance in the uh, high altitude regime here, where you'd be pulling, uh, even if you were wide open, you wouldn't be able to get much more than 23 inches, you know, if you're up at uh, 8,000 feet or something like that. And uh, we retard the timing here at high manifold pressures uh, just to prevent detonation and uh, keep the cylinder head temperatures a little cooler in the climb. Once you uh, get up to a few thousand feet at wide open throttle, the manifold pressure starts dropping off, uh, power starts dropping off, we're not so worried about detonation anymore. So uh, we've got uh, zero degrees of retard here, and at lower manifold pressures we start advancing here slowly. Uh, the burn rate in the cylinder is uh, dropping off as manifold pressure drops off. You got less air molecules in the cylinder. So we can uh, advance timing here to uh, get peak cylinder pressure occurring near the optimal time here. So this is uh, kind of the normal cruise range, probably for cruising 5,000 to, we'll say 18,000 feet. So we have a little bit of advance here. And here's the gauge screen on the CPI. RPM in the upper line here. Manifold pressure below there, 26 inches, and uh, 10 degrees of ignition timing. And here's the CPI RPM 2400, ignition timing 25 degrees. We use the right arrow button to scroll over. And here's the manifold pressure retard windows and advance. And to uh, change the uh, 
advance her retard in the lower part of the window here. We just hit the uh, minus. See we're getting advance here, or we can hit the plus. And then we can get uh, retard. And uh, to move to a different uh, manifold pressure window, just use the arrow button. You'll see the upper line change there. Here's the gauge mode on the CPI-2. So this is showing RPM here, manifold pressure here, 26.6, and the ignition timing here. So this was uh, real-time ignition. So this is what uh, the total advance would be, the combination of RPM ignition and manifold pressure advance or retard. Okay, and here's the uh, RPM ignition windows here. So we're showing 2100 RPM and 25 degrees of timing. We'll scroll over to get to the ignition advance and retard windows. We'll fast scroll over here. So here's the uh, manifold pressure, 17.4, and we're going to advance three degrees there. And we can change this. You can see the advance is dropping off as the manifold pressure increases here. And at high manifold pressure, we're retarding two degrees at 27.8 inches. And here's the EM5 programmer in gauge four mode, showing manifold pressure here, RPM here, and ignition timing in the upper right. So here's the RPM ignition at 1800 RPM, 25 degrees. And again, like the other ones, use the arrow button to scroll over. If you wanted to change the ignition timing at 2000, you would just uh, use the plus, plus button here add timing or subtract timing, very simple. And to get to the uh, manifold pressure advance retard values, we can hold down the right arrow button. It'll fast scroll. Here we are here. Manifold pressure is lower left. Advance retard. Right now we've got three degrees of retard at 28.1 inches. And to change the amount of retard, we can decrement it with the minus button. And we can get advance if we keep going that way. Two degrees advance at 28.1. So we can have uh, any amount of advance or retard at any manifold pressure with uh, any of the three SDS uh, systems. So here we're just sweeping the manifold pressure advance retard values. You can see the uh, amount of retard increases as the manifold pressure increases in this case. And that will pull uh, three degrees of timing out of the uh, RPM timing. So here we're in gauge four mode on an EM5 and we're just increasing the manifold pressure and you can see the uh, amount of retard that's coming in. It's affecting the total timing in the upper right of the screen there. So hopefully that gives you a better understanding of how the SDS timing system works. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.